So the season's over. Yeah. 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 Good evening. Welcome to the November 15th Let's Embark Down Board meeting. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Teresa. Do call the roll. She always does. Uh, I'll entertain approval of the minutes for the first uh, the public hearing on the fourth and the meeting on the eighth. So moved. Second. By um, Ms. Stanner. Yeah. Second by Ms. Wallet. Uh, discussion? Yeah. Teresa. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowin? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Uh, there were a lot of uh, communications and announcements. I just want to congratulate all the uh, teams from Shenandoah that were competing over the last uh, few days. A lot of excitement uh, amongst many different sports with teams um, having extended uh, plays into, uh, into championship tournaments. And I know uh, Councilman Morelli was uh, a very interested uh, bystander watching his daughter play. Uh, as the girls uh, made it to the, the girls soccer made it to the championship game, uh, but um, I do want to congratulate them all for uh, for some terrific uh, um, play this year uh, again amongst uh, various sports. Uh, so uh, congratulations to all of our uh, all of our uh, student athletes. Um, one of our former student athletes was Ian Anderson, who just had a terrific appearance in. The, Game three of the World Series, and uh, was um, proud to welcome him back to the Capital Region. He had a a uh, press conference uh, that I attended and was able to uh, welcome him back after an incredible experience that he's had in recent weeks, uh, and uh, wish him all the best as he uh, kind of winds down a little bit from this year and gets ready for next year. Um, but uh, he just had a terrific. Um, Appearance in the World Series, a ball that he used in the World Series is in Cooperstown. And uh, it's not bad for somebody who uh, is just getting started. So congratulations to him. Uh, we have a, uh, a Moderna vaccination, COVID vaccination booster clinic um, on the 19th. We've announced that uh, some time ago. I, I'm not sure that there's any um, appointments remaining. I don't believe there is. Um, but uh, if you are still looking for a booster shot um, and you're, you favor Moderna um, and you're still interested, uh, we can check for you. If you call uh, call Town Hall tomorrow, 371-0083, and uh, we did have a Pfizer booster clinic uh, in recent weeks. Um, at that time, Pfizer was the only uh, booster that was approved. Uh, 
uh, by the federal government. Uh, so, uh, so now we're uh, offering the Moderna, which I know was very popular the first time around with many folks. So again, that's this Friday from nine to three. Um, and um, if you'd like more information, please mm -hmm. contact my office. I want to thank Shen for a couple of nice events for Veterans Day. They had a uh, Veterans Day event uh, with three different musical groups uh, at the school, which was tremendous and some great speakers uh, last week. And they also had their annual 5K at the track. And uh, again, that was a very nice event. And I want to thank uh, team at Shen for, uh, for those uh, nice uh, events and remembrances and celebration of our veterans. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the uh, Siddeley Road area over the last couple of years. Um, we completed uh, some uh, terrific improvements to the area. And um, unfortunately, soon thereafter, the bridge was struck. And uh, I don't need to go through that timeline, but uh, there's been a temporary bridge that's been in place uh, that bridge will be fully replaced next year. So we look forward to uh, having a nice level bridge again. Uh, as part of that, uh, we had been poured upon uh, the Department of Transportation that uh, since they were replacing the bridge, um, that uh, pedestrian access would be something that would be desired by the town board and in uh, the residents of Clifton Park and would John Scavo reported today that there, uh, the, the final plans do show 11 foot travel lanes, six foot shoulders, and then a five foot sidewalk on the north side. So uh, that'll give us uh, an opportunity to, for additional projects to make, make connections in those areas uh, for, um, for our uh, many residents that use that area on foot or on bike. Um, so that's all I have for communications and announcements. Any takers this evening? Yes, Mrs. Standard. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. So um, the Town of Clifton Park Youth Corp is um, getting back into action. We were on a pause for uh, much of all of last year, actually. March 12, 2020 was our last youth court hearing that we held. Um, as everyone is aware, March 13th is really was when the school district had um, issued their closure. Uh, notifications and essentially the entire world shut down. So we have been um, on pause for that long time, but I'm pr happy to say that Youth Court is um, starting up again. I've met with um, the school district and they are on board. We've been communicating with um, our probation up at uh, Saratoga County. They are ready to get jumped back into um, the Youth Court uh, program with us as well. We held an informational meeting last week. We had a lot of involvement. A lot of kids showed up at this informational meeting. And so um, we will be accepting applications very soon. We are in the process of getting our application up on our website. More information will be made available publicly once um, the application is up and ready to go and our training sessions get started. Um, so anyone who is interested in youth court or knows anyone who might be interested in joining the youth court, uh, they can certainly reach out to me at standard at clinkonpark.org. Our information is also on our clinkonpark.org web website. But very excited to, to announce that youth court is, is coming back and we're looking forward to, to serving our community um, with that incredible program. So thank you. Okay, anyone else? Uh, I just wanted yeah. to mention the first Friday at the Historic Rooms Tavern, Friday, December 3rd, the Toastmasters um, will be meeting. And um, Commander Garcha mm -hmm. will be talking about public speaking and how to increase communication skills. So, look forward to that. Very good. All right. Uh, we do have uh, one presentation this evening. There was. Um, EDD that was submitted to the uh, to the town, and um, the, the first action when we do receive a PDD is that uh, it would be um, referred to the planning board for initial review. Um, thought it would be uh, useful to uh, just have a short presentation and description uh, of the uh, project and environmental design partnership was. Uh, 
going to give that presentation. Are they uh, here this evening, John? I believe it's uh, folks are here, but it's not EDP. It's uh, Jason, I believe. Oh, or Jason. I guess uh, I guess our <laughs> I guess our agenda is wrong. Yeah. So uh, I'm Paul Rogan. I'm oh, I, yeah. Come on up, please. Okay. You want me to come up here? Yeah, please. Sorry for the uh, mistake there. So Paul, Paul Rogan on, on behalf of the applicant, um, hello town board members, hello everybody. Uh, thanks so much for having having me come in tonight. I um, to give a little background of the genesis of, of uh, pursuing this project. I, I was one of the owners and operators of the Sportsplex Half Moon for many, many years, and uh, COVID hit and it destroyed business. And to make a long story short, um, the, the landlord pursued sale of the building and, and we vacated in uh, February of this year. Um, immediately realized uh, the void that not having the Sportsplex had in, in the Clifton Park community as far as indoor turf space goes. And so we started pursuing other options and landed on uh, friends of ours who own Players Park, which is adjacent to Eagle Crest. It's a uh, eight acre site that um, we started looking at as a potential site to have an uh, indoor sports facility and an outdoor turf field. Because um, I've also been pursuing that uh, for many years, trying to figure out a way that, that the Cook and Park community might be able to have an outdoor turf field. And um, you know, the first thing I did was look at the zoning uh, for the PDD, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that it included uh, sports fields um, as, as potential options for, for that land. And, um, and so, you know, while I realized that, uh, you know, obviously for an indoor facility, we need the PDD amendment, it was, it was good to see that, that there was contemplation of a recreational use of, of the fields. Um, currently, right now, there's a um, foot golf business that goes on that operates. Uh, so 10 o'clock each night has lights on it and uh, like I said the owners would be willing to, um, to terminate that business and, and, and replace it with, with an indoor sports facility. Um, do you want me to go into the details about? Yeah you could yeah absolutely. Yeah, just, uh, give absolutely. us an idea of the you know the size and the scope and uh, absolutely yeah. so so right now there's a there's a miniature golf course and then there's an ice cream stand and then there's a uh, a seven and a half acre site that, that has foot golf on it and um, that's soccer golf uh, which apparently is very very popular in other parts of the world um hasn't really taken on so much in upstate new york but they've been operating it and um we would be looking to put in about a 43 44,000 square foot uh indoor facility it would not be a metal building it would not be a bubble uh, but it would really be a, a turf field that has coverage and heat for the winter a fabric structure would would enclose the turf field and um, very streamlined business. We, we would not be looking to operate a restaurant or even a concession stand. Uh, there would not be an attached fitness room. Uh, there would be, wouldn't be a second floor. The sports flex was a much more expensive business. For us, we just realized that there's a huge need for mostly for youth, but for adults too, for the community, uh, for indoor turf space. And, and that's really our focus of, in providing it. Um, so we're looking at, uh, like I said, about a 43,000 square foot piece of land that would have the fabric structure over it. Um, it'd be about 55, 60% as big as the sports flex was, uh, lower ceilings. Um, you know, I know that that's a cool part of Clifton Park, the, the structure I think would fit in well with, with the community out there. Um, these fabric structures are oftentimes used in, in farming applications. Um, and so these days they, they can build them really well insulate them, give them good heat. So all of a sudden, now they've become uh, a, a good possibility for indoor sports. And uh, it's hard to find examples. Um, Stony Brook University just put in a beautiful one. Um, there's some tennis facilities that, that are these fabric structures, but they're really framed. They're not that high. And, and then they pull fabric over it for the winter. You can roll up the sides on uh, warmer days. And you know the contemplation would be for um, indoor soccer, lacrosse, softball training, baseball training, uh, flag football, ultimate frisbee, um, you know, all of those sort of activities. And, uh, and then uh, in conjunction with that, there, there's enough land that you can also put in an, an outdoor turf field 
Uh, there's already lights uh, on the current business there, uh, and so we would be doing the same same idea, except for no longer having the foot golf, but but having a turf field that that all the sports could be played on as well. Uh, right now, there's probably about 50 parking spaces uh, in the lot for the miniature golf. We, uh, you know, in the proposed initial site plan, we're looking at adding like another 135 parking spaces, to be about 185 parking spaces. Um, we've actually met with the new owners of Eagle Crest. You know, coincidentally, Eagle Crest was just sold, and uh, you know, they were very excited at the prospect of, of uh, a, a change of, of, of business at, at Players Park. Uh, so if there's any questions I could answer. So the uh, you mentioned the height a couple of times. So what what would be the height? Do you, do you know so at, at the peak, you'd probably be about forty feet. Uh, on the sides, you could be as low as say you know, 15, 15 feet or so, eight feet. eighteen feet on the sides. So it's a, it's a smaller building. I, I understand that the Sportsplex was a very imposing building, and of course it was in an industrial park, so it fit in. Uh, even you know the new impact. Uh, at Blake Center, it's a very imposing building. This is this is a smaller building, uh, not nearly as high, and not nearly as big. I mean, you know, the the, the new Impact Center is like 80,000 square feet. This is about half that size, and and there's no second floor, uh, so so you don't have the same height, especially on the sides. It started at about 18 feet, and then you would have to crest up to a to a peak of about 40 feet or so. So. Um... Just to give us an idea on the, you know, the, the space available inside. Yes. Um, say a regulation soccer field. Um, it would house one of those. It has about two thirds of a regulation soccer. Two thirds. It'd be able to be broken up into uh, two indoor fields that would be about 55 yards long and about 35 yards wide. Uh, the total space utilized could be about 55 yards wide and 80 yards long if you were going to just use the whole space. So it wouldn't be mm -hmm. quite as long as a traditional soccer field. Oh. And then on the outside, you, you want a, uh, a turf field that's lit? An outdoor turf field uh, that, that we have light so the community could use it till about 10 o'clock. Right now, the current business operates till 10. Um, you know, we contemplated maintaining those same sort of hours because it is in, in a, a somewhat residential area. We wouldn't be looking to operate past 10 o'clock at night on the outdoor field. Okay. Uh, it, that, that would be a full field. Uh, it would be lined for softball. It would be lined for lacrosse, field hockey, soccer. And 185 parking spaces. Uh, what would be the uh, approximate distance of the um, say the outskirts of the project is I don't mean the property boundary itself I mean the the, the where, where the activity would end from that point to say the nearest homes which would be um, just a little further down 146a there um, how, do you have any idea what the yeah, exactly. distance would be exactly so it's you have that the first house would, would Exactly, be on, on the west side going down 146A. Um, there's uh, fortunately already there's a, there's a tree line there uh, separating the, the two lots. And um, you know from from the, the, the side of the field, I, I, I don't know, 50, 60 yards. Yeah, I was going to say 150 feet. Yeah, probably about 50 yards. Um, you know, right now that the foot golf probably goes a little bit further, closer to the to, to, to the tree line than, than the, the field would. Mm -hmm. um, the field wouldn't need to go that that far across, um, but probably about 50 yards. Um, we had a, um, you know, the, the uh, Eagle Crest Golf Course was uh, at one point uh, interested in uh, developing the golf course, and that was an issue that, that we talked about at that point as well, distance to the neighbors and how the layout would uh, affect any of the nearby uh, homeowners. Sure. Um, all right. Uh, any other uh, questions, comments at this time? I mean, I would just make a comment. I mean, I'm certainly interested in what the uh, what the planning department and the planning um, board has to say. I mean, that's obviously why we're we have on the agenda tonight to refer to them. But you know, 
as a parent, I mean, there definitely is a need in our town for a uh, a space like this. I mean, you know, having kids in sports, even just, you know, what the supervisor was alluding to, it's only the sports teams making it to postseason, the football team making it to the section finals, a one turf field that Shen has was at a premium. And I know I was bringing my daughter down to the sports park by the airport so the Shenandoah team could get um, some turf time because they were they were playing on turf. So there's there's definitely a need in our town. Um, I'll wait to see what the um, you know what the planning board has to say about the specific location. But I I'm all you know with the sportsplex gone. There's so many uh, sports that utilize turf and utilize it year round. I definitely think we need to you know be open to a project like this somewhere in our town. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Hey, John, can you um, can you let? Is there any way that you would know what meeting this might uh, might be on? Yes, I believe it's the December meeting, which is December fourteenth for the planning board. All right. So if we refer it tonight, the expectation would be that it'll be on the agenda for the December fourteenth planning Correct. board, which starts at seven. Yes. However, there's usually uh, more than one item. Correct. Um, the the process would be uh, that uh, a project is referred, uh, typically referred to the planning board. They give an initial overview, send that recommendation back to the town board. Ultimately, it's the town board's decision as far as the um, as far as approving a PDD or not. Uh, so that uh, that is. That comes back here. So yes, it does go to planning, but then it comes back to the town board. Um, there's no particular time frame other than you have the planning board has 60 days to review it in in full and get us back a recommendation. Right? Correct. We have 60 days to make a recommendation to the planning board in writing back to this town board um, and approve the PDD deny the PDD or approve what modifications are the three options prescribed by the code. And we also, uh, that board will make a recommendation relative to Seeker and the applicability of the State Environmental Quality Review Act um, for the town board. And then um, the town board at some point, you know, if they choose to pursue the PDD, a public hearing would be scheduled on the proposed legislation. If the PDD is approved, that just amends the uses prescribed by the PDD, but then the applicant needs to go back to planning for site plan approval at that point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Marty, did you have a question? Yeah, just a quick question. Is there going to be like seating improvements, seating around the outside field and inside? So, like, I mean, like bleachers or? Or small bleachers. I mean, it's it's not really for like not for like a spectator sport, but for like parents and family. Yes, okay. there'd be seats. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. All right. There's no further questions. Uh, appreciate you being here with uh, Jason, engineer. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, appreciate it. Making that presentation. Uh, all information. Uh, will be with the uh, town clerk's office or planning. Uh, so uh, if anybody does have any questions about the project and would like to review the materials that are available, you can certainly do that. Uh, I would suggest making an appointment uh, with the planning department to, uh, to do that. Would that be the best thing to do? Yes, I'll reach out to Paul and we'll yeah. discuss next steps. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank right. you. Appreciate Before it. On the weekend? It was one. Yeah. Till the end. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we do have a uh, number of resolutions for consideration. Teresa, if you could uh, read through those, please. Okay. A resolution scheduling a public hearing to solicit public input regarding local output provisions, opt out, excuse me, opt out provisions of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act of 2021. Whereas on March 31st, 2021, New York State enacted the Marijuana uh, Regulation and Taxation Act, MRTA, legalizing the adult use of recreational cannabis products within the state. And whereas pursuant to Chapter 131 of the legislation, local governments are authorized to 
opt out of the provisions of the statute allowing the retail dis dispensation dis dispensation yes. sorry yeah, that, <laughs> and or the on-site consumption of cannabis products and whereas the town board wishes to schedule a public hearing to solicit solicit public input in the output opt out uh, provisions of the MRTA as they relate to on-site locations for the retail dis dispensation of and or consumption of marijuana and cannabis products. Now, therefore, be it resolved that a public hearing is hereby scheduled to take place by Monday, December 6, 2021 at 7.05 p.m. in the Wood Memorial Room, 1 Town Hall Plaza, <coughs> Park, New York, to consider whether to opt out of the allowances of the retail sales or on-site consumption of cannabis products for the attached proposal. And the town clerk is directed to public publish appropriate notice of the same. A resolution adopting the 2022 budget for the town of Cookman Park, whereas a public hearing was held on the preliminary budget on November 4th, 2021, to obtain comment from the public regarding the proposed budget for 2022, and whereas the comments of the public have been incorporated in the proposed budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the 2022 town of Cookman Park budget is hereby adopted. A resolution accepting a quote from GAR Associates, LLC, for a limited scope summary appraisal for a 31.74 plus or minus acre parcel on Riverview Road, known as the lands of Gale and Wallace Watchtowitz, um, whereas quotes were received for the appraisal and whereas GAR Associates, LLC, 632 Plank Road, Suite 203, Cook and Park, submitted the lowest responsive quote in the amount of $2,200 for the appraisal, and whereas John Scavel, planning director, has reviewed the quote and recommends accepting the quote, which was submitted by GAR Associates. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board accepts the quote of GAR Associates for the limited scope summary appraisal report for amount not to exceed $2,200 to be paid for the general fund, other town payments, equipment. A resolution referring the Eagle Crest Plantation Plan Development District, PDD, to the planning board for an advisory opinion, whereas Sportsplex of Half Moon Incorporated has applied for an amendment to the zoning code to authorize an indoor-outdoor sports facility on a portion of the PDD known as Players Park. And whereas applications for a planned development district require an amendment to the special zoning district pursuant to the PDD approval process contained within Chapter 208 sub 72 of the town code. And whereas the town board wishes to refer the sportsplex of Half Moon Incorporated application to the planning board for their advisory opinion. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the application of Sportsplex of, o of Half Moon is referred to the town's planning board for their advisory opinion pursuant to Chapter 20871 at seat of the town code. A resolution accepting an offer of dedication of the road system, drainage easements, and future trail and roadway improvements within the Vistas West uh, subdivision. Whereas, pursuant to New York State Highway Law 171, the town board has the discretion to accept the dedication of roads and real property for public use. And whereas pursuant to the approved subdivision plans, the developer of Vistas West Development LLC, Frank Kohler, offered to dedicate a road system, including certain drainage facilities, along with easements over several approved lots for drainage purposes. And whereas Prime Engineering has com completed inspections and reports for all punchless items have been completed. And whereas Highway Superintendent Dan Bull concurs in the acceptance of the road system at this time. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board accepts the offer of dedication of the Vistas Court extended, as well as certain stormwater management parcels and including incidental property along Tanner Road as depicted on the approved subdivision map and as more particularly described in the attached deeds, subject to approval of the town attorney and of all real estate transfer documents, review of the title and confirmation of the payment of appropriate taxes. A resolution authorizing and the superintendent of highways, Dan Bull, to commence a procurement policy to acquire up to six new plow trucks. Whereas the superintendent of highways has sought town board approval for the acquisition of additional snow plow trucks over recent budget cycles and has discussed ways and means of adding to the plow truck fleet with members of the town board. And whereas the 2022 preliminary budget was introduced on September 21st, 2021, without provisions for additional plow trucks for the highway department. And whereas the current economic conditions and federal policies have disrupted the supply chain of goods and services, including <clears throat> components of large vehicles, including snowplow trucks, such that delivery lead times are now estimated at 12 to 18 months, necessitating near-term 
action to acquire new trucks for the department's snow and ice maintenance responsibilities to the town. And whereas the town board supports aggressive planning for the acquisition and financing of additional vehicles for the department for delivery of, in 2023. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorizes the superintendent of highways to compile a list of, of sources and available contracts, bids, and related methods of procuring up to six new plow trucks for the highway fleet consistent with general municipal law chapter 103 and to present options therefore to the board by january of 2022 and be it further resolved that the comptroller is authorized to explore master these options consistent with applicable procurement guidelines and to present options for the funding and financing of the procurement of up to six plow trucks vehicles for the snow uh, for the highway department for the same time frame a resolution accepting quotes for fence repairs along the portion of the ball fields at veterans memorial park whereas quotes were received by the buildings and grounds department for fence repairs for the attached quote around field number three at trans memorial park and whereas the lowest conforming quote for the repairs was submitted by by Mariah mariahville fence 61 blue barnes road rexford an amount not to exceed six thousand three hundred and thirty five dollars Whereas the town conforming quote for the fence installation, the lowest conforming quote for the fence installation was submitted by Mariahville Fence 31, Blue Barnes Road, Rexford, New York, and about not to exceed $6,460. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board hereby awards the contract to Mariahville Fence repairs for the fencing gates and backstop of field number three in Veterans Memorial Park at a top total cost not to exceed $6,000. $460 to be charged from general fund veterans park equipment. Resolution to go out to bid for the construction of a permanent awning structure at the Clifton Park Highway Department. Whereas on August 17, 2021, the Clifton Park Highway had an accidental fire that caused several severe damage to the facility, known locally as the White Building. And whereas the White Building housed various pieces of equipment and machinery, as well as seven days for plow trucks over the winter months. And whereas there is an immediate need to design and construct temporary structures in order to provide cover and protection from the elements to our plow, plow feet, fleet. And whereas Prime AE Group of New York has produced an estimate and scope of work for the construction of a permanent wood and steel structured awning that will protect vehicles and equipment displaced by the fire from winter weather. And whereas Prime AE Group of New York has estimated the cost of the project not to exceed $98,000. And whereas Prime AE Group will prepare bid documents, advertise bids, and provide recommendations and analysis for bid responses. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board authorizes the superintendent of highways to go out to bid with the specifications and estimations determined by Prime AE Group of New York, and be it further resolved that Prime AE Group of New York will continue to work at the contractual rates that have been previously adopted by the town board in resolution number one of 2021. A resolution adopting James Colombi as a building inspector per civil service specifications. Whereas James Colombi successfully passed the civil service exam and was placed on the certification list of eligible building inspectors provided by Saratoga County Human Resources on October 14, 2021. And whereas an opening exists for the building inspector in the Department of Building and Development. And whereas Steve Miners, Director of Building and Zoning, has interviewed Mr. Colombi and wishes to hire Mr. Colombi as a building inspector. Now, therefore, be it resolved that James Colombi, 128 Pine Hill Road, Mechanicville, is hereby appointed as building inspector for the Town of Clifton Park for Civil Service Certification, effective December 1st, 2021. A resolution authorizing the issuance of right of way permits for installation of fiber optic high speed internet throughout Clifton Park. Whereas Green Light Networks, once 1777 East Henrietta Road, Rochester, New York, is an internet service provider in the, in the business of providing high speed broadband internet service through fiber, fiber optic cables for residential and commercial customers. And whereas Green Light has requested permission to occupy space within the town's roadway right of way for both overhead and underground communication facilities, improvements, and conduits. And whereas pursuant to New York State Highway Law 1, Chapter 149, the town board may authorize the highway superintendent to issue permits for such purposes upon terms and conditions that the highway department shall determine for the protection and restoration of the town roadways and right-of-ways in each case. 
And whereas the town board supports the initiative to enhance access to broadband and high speed internet access for residents and businesses within the town. Now, therefore, be absolved that the supervisor is authorized to execute the attached memorandum of agreement with Greenlight Networks to authorize the installation of fiber optic lines above ground pursuant to the attached annual permit consistent with an agreement with utilities owning and maintaining such poles and supporting installations. And be it further resolved that the highway superintendent is authorized to issue an annual permit pursuant to highway law, chapter 149, as well as individual permits for construction within the town right of way as attached. And be it further resolved that the annual permit fee for maintenance of the fiber optic facilities within the right of way is set at $2,000 and the highway superintendent is authorized to collect per cut permit fees for the attached schedule for the underground installations. A resolution appointing Scott P. Stiles to the Zoning Board of Appeals, whereas due to the resignation of Dr. Ye Feng Wang, a vacancy for an alternate member exists on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and whereas Scott P. Stiles, 54, Hemlock Drive, Clifton Park has recommended to fill the vacant position. And whereas Mr. Stiles has a background experience, education and training to act effective, effectively as a zoning board member. Now therefore be it resolved that Scott Stiles and is hereby appointed as an alternate member to the bill, to the zoning board of appeals term to expire December 31st, 2021. Very good. Uh, any questions on the resolutions? Okay. Yes, Steve. Uh, I just wanted to uh, can I change the date of Jim start the 29th of November rather than the first? That's Monday versus Wednesday. The start date. Yeah, yeah. He had mentioned the first to us. Yeah, I spoke to him tonight. He said. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, don't you? Okay. He said the 29th of work. The so he's eager. Yeah, absolutely. He's ready. Are you ready, Jim? I'm ready. You're ready. All right. You're ready. Okay. So we're changing it to November 29th. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sooner the better. All righty. Anyone? Okay. Uh, if you could read the headings, uh, please, Teresa. Resolution number 257 of 2021, resolution scheduling a public hearing to solicit public input regarding local opt out provisions of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act of 2021. So second. by Mr. Morelli, second by uh, Mrs. Flood. Um, so this uh, public hearing uh, would be set uh, for December 6th. Uh, the uh, legislation is written in such a way uh, to opt out of both the retail sales and the, um, and the uh, marijuana lounges uh, because uh, opting out requires an action not opting out doesn't require an action. Uh, you can simply let the time run out, not opt out, and you're automatically opted in. But if you want to opt out, that does require an action. So that's why it's written in the way that it is to preserve that option for the town board should that be the decision. Uh, so again, that'll be December 6th at uh, 7 05. Okay. Any uh, discussion? Okay, Teresa. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Mollowit? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 258 of 2021, a resolution adopting the 2022 budget for the town of Clifton Park. So moved. Second. So by Mrs. Standard, second by Mrs. Flood. Mark, um, we had some uh, proposed changes coming out of the uh, public hearing. Yes. So if you want to run through those? So the uh, the changes were um, um, increases to one for four individuals plus Social Security, so um, that totals twenty five thousand nine ninety one. Um, and then also what was discussed was taking the third part time attorney salary out of the budget, and that was eight thousand five hundred sixty seven dollars reduction. So a total increase in the overall expenditures of 17,424. And we are balancing the general fund budget um, by increasing the sales tax revenue um, by 17,420. 
for. And based on the uh, future uh, needs of the town, that, that position may need to return, but uh, I think at this point, uh, it's not necessary from what the uh, town attorney explained at the last meeting, or the public hearing, I should say. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, okay. So everybody's had a chance to uh, review those? Very good. Uh, any discussion at this point? Good, Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowood? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 259 of 2021, a resolution accepting a quote from GAR Associates LLC for a limited scope summary appraisal for a 31.74 acre parcel on Riverview Road known as the lands of Gay and Wallace Watchtowich. Uh, SBL 288.1-49.1. So moved. Okay. By Mrs. Standard, second by Mrs. Flood. Um, this uh, this property uh, in ownership dates all the way back to the Van Branken family in the uh, uh, 1600s. Uh, the land above came into the Van Branken family in 1672 when Rickard Kloss Van Branken purchased the property. Um, the land was uh, eventually divided between his three sons, Garrett, Moss, and Evert. It might be Evert. I'll say Evert. Uh, in 1688, when Rickard died, the land in question seemed to be called the middle farm of son Garrett. This information comes from John Shearer. John is, uh, has a great write-up on the property. If anybody's interested in uh, the history, there's a lot more history here, but that was the... Uh, the original owner way back when. Jim, did you, uh, as a member of the Open Space Committee, did you have something you wanted to do? I don't, but I will. The okay. Open, the open you don't, but you will? Yeah, right. <laughs> the Open Space Committee did pass a resolution endorsing this, yeah. uh, the acquisition of this property. Yeah, and the owners uh, are interested. <clears throat> right. meet with them and they are interested. Uh, John, did anything that you want to add here? No, just that, well, we reached out to five firms, um, you know, uh, for the appraisal. For the appraisal, yep. um, the low quote is a local Clifton Park business who said they can turn it around within a four-week time frame. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, working with them. The property with the Wojtowicz uh, family is currently under a term conservation <laughs> easement, and it is identified as a priority parcel in the open space plan. So there is a value to that term conservation easement program that where applicable, if we can get somebody under a permanent conservation easement or in this case, fee, potential fee title acquisition, um, it just provides permanent open space protection going forward. John did a better job than I did. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> Thank you, John. Well, he knew I was gonna call on him. He better be right. Yeah, I'd be surprised. Yeah, you had no idea. <laughs> But uh, there's some great pictures in here too. Uh, actually, these copies don't do them justice. But you know, land has been continuously farmed right up until today. If you're uh, if you're heading east on Riverview as you come out of the village, uh, it's um, it's just before you start to get into the area of the uh, main entrance of the Bishop Perry Preserve. So uh, beautiful area, a lot of history, and um, um, so we we do have some interest uh, at the uh, the right terms. All right. Uh, any discussion? Okay. Teresa? Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowick? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. Resolution number 260, 2060 of 2021, a resolution referring the Eagle Crest Plantation Plan Development District to the Planning Board for an advisory opinion. So moved. Second. Well, by Mr. Standard, second by Mrs. Flood. As we uh, discussed earlier, um, this resolution were re would refer the project to the planning board, um, and the planning board will uh, review it um, and uh, send a recommendation back to the town board. Um, if, if the town board were to not approve the project and would stop process would stop at that point if the town board were to approve it 
the project would return to the uh, planning board for full site plan uh, for the full site plan process. Um, so that's the general process. If anybody's uh, wondering what it might be, uh, any questions in the interim? Again, you can contact us uh, to, to review the information that we have available. Please uh, uh, call the planning department, and we can get that to you. Um, Think that's it. They'll leave anything out, John? Nope. Um, folks can go to cliftonpark.org, sign up for alerts uh, for both uh, agendas for the planning board and town board uh, to see when the meetings are scheduled. There you go. Okay. Okay. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilmember Rowney? Yes. Councilwoman Lollowood? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 261, 2021, a resolution accepting an offer of dedication of the road system, drainage easements, and future trail and roadway improvements within the Vistas West subdivision. Second? Moved by Mrs. Flood, second by Mrs. Standard. Discussion? Okay, Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Yeah. Question before dedication. There are a few things that um, this is like Tom and I were working on this a little bit. This is like the one that we thought was going to be the only one to make it this year. Um, there were some things that they did that they knocked up on their punch list. So really, my question is for John: um, If their punch list items don't last the winter season, do we still keep a bond? if we have to go back and fix them? Yes, there's a 10% bond. Ideally, though, we would want the builder to go back and fix it. Even better. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, um, some of the residents had contacted me. They weren't, they were a little concerned with the work that was done. And I said, I just want to double check with you before we take dedication sure. that that's something that we can lean on. An example I'll give the board and the folks here this evening is uh, about all trees were replaced in heritage <coughs> that were planted last year. Roads were dedicated, turned over. They didn't survive the winter season. So while they're in the towns right away, uh, the builder went back, had the landscaper replace those trees under that one year warranty period. So. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Sander? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowood? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 262 of 2021, a resolution authorizing the superintendent of highways, Dan Bull, to commence a procurement policy to act, acquire up to six new plow trucks. So moved. Second. Second. By Mrs. Standard, second by Mr. Morelli. Discussion? Uh, yes. Swallow it? Yeah, thank you. Um, some of you uh, watching here tonight and watching from home may want to ask why six. six snow clouds. Um, in 2019, the highway superintendent asked uh, during the budget to purchase snow clouds. In 2020, the budget workshops asked for more snow clouds. Those requests were denied, and this year he has come to us with a request for six snow clouds. Obviously, the situation has become extremely serious, and we do need the equipment. Even more seriously, because of the chain supply, uh, chain band demand supply, we cannot get the clouds this year. I want to commend the superintendent and his crews for the hard work they're doing on keeping the older trucks moving and hopefully getting through this coming winter. Um, and I thank my colleagues for their support on this. Okay, anyone else? Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Mullowick? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 263 of 2021, a resolution accepting quotes for fencing repairs along portions of the ball field deck, Veterans Memorial Park. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, moved by Mrs. Flood, second by Mr. Morelli. Mr. Clemens. Yeah, this uh, Veterans Memorial Park, there are three softball fields up there, all completely fenced in with backstops and uh, dugouts. All three of them have various needs. Uh, field three was probably the worst shape of the three. 
and we have money left in the budget, so we had some people look at it. We're going to fix all the gates, the backstops, the dugouts, some of the line posts, and bring that field up to snuff, and then next year we'll work on field one and two. Yeah. Yeah, and they still, uh, they do receive a uh, heavy amount of abuse. Yeah, I think it actually increased uh, during COVID. Yeah, there's an outdoor activity yeah. that uh, a lot of people could take advantage of, uh, and we do have a... Uh, Somebody bring a cat. That's got to be you, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't bring a cat to the meeting, did no, you? No, I left him at the shelter. <laughs> now, do you have a camera where you can uh, check in on them live? Is that what you're... Oh, no. Oh. That was just... Or is that your ringer? That was... I don't know what it was. <laughs> it's, just, it's now sitting over there. <laughs> uh, I thought maybe it was your ringer. Uh, but anyway... Softball is very popular in town, and uh, so these, these are good investments uh, to uh, help play. Lisa, we'll go with that. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Sander? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowa? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 264 of 2021, a resolution to go out to bid for the construction of a permanent awning structure at the Clifton Park Highway Department. Um, second. Moved by Ms. Wallet, second by Mrs. Standard. So we had an unfortunate uh, fire earlier this year over at the highway department, unfortunately. Winter is coming. Sure felt like it today. Uh, so what are the uh, what are the details here, uh, yep. so Superintendent of Highway? We are going to be building a, uh, a, a permanent structure, an awning off the back of, of the building. Um, after the loss of the white building, we've been jockeying things around, uh, trying to play what we call as highway Tetris of trying to fit trucks where they need to go. Uh, if we currently close two of our mechanic bays over winter, out of the three, we can fit all of our trucks inside. Um, so we can either close two mechanic bays and not have enough to repair our own trucks, not have left, let alone the rest of the fleet for the town. So uh, we're going to be having some of them outside. We may have to do some rewiring because of block heaters, uh, but we're going to cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, I just want to say thank you to uh, Teresa and Meg from the account attorney's office for working with me today on getting things ready so that we can go out to bid tomorrow. We got have a few um, Clifton Park businesses that uh, we'll be sending plans and stuff to tomorrow, or once it gets in the paper, so everyone gets a fair, fair fight at the end. Okay. The, um, the, yes. We were back and forth a little bit on this, um, and one of the edits did not get into the final. Uh, Teresa, the third whereas clause still says this is a temporary structure. I think you clarified today it's going to be permanent, so you can change that for me. Sure. Okay. okay. Any uh, further discussion? Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Sander? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowa? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 265 of 2021, resolution appointing James Colombi as a building inspector for civil service classification. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Mrs. Flood. Uh, Steve and I recently interviewed Mr. Colombi. He's here tonight. Hello, Jim. Um, he has. Uh, Impressive background and qualifications, and he, uh, he did take the civil service test, Steve. Yeah, um, he did very well on the test. Uh, yeah. I think he'll uh, fit in well in the department. Just go through the training, get certified, but uh, does have a reasonable amount of construction experience, so I think it'll, it'll work out well. Good. And he's obviously eager. He moved up the start date a couple days. He's ready to go. Right. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowa? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Congratulations. Resolution number 266 of 2021, a resolution authorizing the issuance of right of way permits for installation of fiber optic high speed internet throughout Clifton Park. So moved. Second. Mr. Standard, second by Ms. Wallowitz. And, um, so this was uh, an exciting opportunity for the town. Um, you know, this type of service has been 
uh, discussed at length um, regarding investments in infrastructure. Um, that, that's how it's been classified with a lot of programs uh, and that um, different funding sources, public funding sources, can uh, pay for the expansion of, uh, of uh, broadband and uh, high-speed service. Um, so Greenlight uh, currently is not um, in the capital region. Uh, they, uh, they are interested in uh, beginning uh, investing in Clifton Park as the first step into the region. Uh, but um, definitely uh, an exciting opportunity for the town to uh, increase competition. I know this is something that a lot of people have asked for over the years. Um, and uh, we'll continue to work with them uh, till they uh, get to the point where they're ready to begin work and, uh, and install the service. So, um, so that's where we are. Um, I think it, it's been out there for a little bit now. So uh, anybody that uh, is, is interested in uh, uh, what Greenlight, the company, has to offer uh, in the story behind the company, it's, uh, it's you can find a lot of information out there. Tom Galasano, who's a fairly well-known individual in New York business circles, is the, um, uh, I think he bought the about the controlling interest in the company um, not long ago, and uh, they've been expanding uh, um, aggressively, and they're going to do the same here in Clifton Park. So, uh, with that being said, we do uh, we do have um, permits um, in a process for Greenlight to follow, just as we have for uh, other businesses. Um, Tom, did you want? To... Uh, not really. I think it's pretty. Uh, they're just looking for uh, the permission to occupy the space. Most of the lines are going to be above ground, but they may uh, look to bury some of the lines, and for that they would need street opening permits. So that's all that the uh, 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 agreement says. It's a very short uh, agreement just allowing them to occupy the space and get permits as necessary. Yeah. All right, very good. Um, yeah, and I just found that information I was referring to, uh, and th this is from their marketing department. It's not, certainly we're not um, playing favorites in the industry, but uh, Greenlight Networks is an ultra high speed broadband service provider offering residential and small business customers internet speeds up to two gigabyte per second. Greenlight Networks was founded in 2011 in Rochester. Tom Galasano acquired a controlling interest and Greenlight Networks uh, in mid-2018. Since then, Greenlight has tripled its staff, brought high-speed fiber internet to more than 65,000 homes and 15 municipalities. The company builds, owns, and operates its fiber optic networks to provide amazingly fast internet connections to its customers. For more information, you can visit greenlightnetworks.com. So, so if you are interested in that service, it's only They'll, they'll be expanding in certain areas within the town uh, initially and um, broadening from there, I suspect. All right, very good. Any discussion? Yeah, no, I have a question. Yeah, go right ahead. Tom, so is it Highway Law 149 if it's a, for lack of a better word, screw something up that we have to hold them accountable to? Is that a legal term? Uh, yes. yes, that's a complex legal term. Um, the, uh, uh, actually, most of the, like I said, most of, of the um, uh, lines they intend at this stage are going to be above ground with existing or coming agreements with National Grid, Verizon, and whoever else owns the existing poles above ground. To the extent that they have uh, bearing, they're going to, uh, to, to build underground lines, the highways, uh, street opening permits contain uh, insurance and indemnity language, uh, which is, I think, the most uh, likely need for that type of protection. Thanks. Good. Very good. Yes. 
Oh, yeah, I just had a, I just had a few questions on this. Um, the last resolve that says that the annual permit fee for maintenance for uh, fiber optic facilities within the right of way is set at three thousand dollars. Is that so? Every year we're getting three thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah. All right. Where's what is that three thousand dollars for? Uh, that is their permission to go to a pole and and repair or replace a line if something happens to it. Okay. Why does why does that go to us and not the people who own the poles? Uh, there, the, the request was to occupy the space in the right of way, and uh, we asked them for what their current, you know, uh, um, uh, arrangements were in many of the municipalities they're in. We not a free service. We certainly didn't want to price them out of Clifton Park. Sure. We wanted to welcome them in, so uh, we negotiated a fee that was consistent with what their other arrangements usually are, and we didn't want to make it a, a, a free new service that they could just, just uh, occupy space within the town right away without compensation to the town. Okay. What, what do we charge National Grid and, and Spectrum? That's in the tariffs, in the existing tariffs, and I, and, and I didn't look that up. They're so old. Um, I suspect that those and I think the I think the national grid tariff has long expired. We talked to them yeah. years ago, right, about oh, yeah. about trying to re-up it, and they just didn't didn't respond at all. So those agreements are outdated and expired. Okay, and then I had sent you know, on that October seventh um, our permit that we send out for yes. for right way cuts and all that stuff. Um, so our permit fee is five hundred dollars, and this it sets out a fee of three hundred fifteen dollars. Um, what was the, is there a reason for the decrease? Oh, and I should probably also say we hold the $500 kind of as a retainer in the event. If, if everything looks great when they're done, we give it right back to them. Right. So you don't, you don't essentially collect the, right. We don't collect it. So are we now collecting yes. from them for doing this? Yes. Is that a practice the town board wants to put in place for other utilities too, such as national grid and, uh, and spectrum? I, I, think, I think we should open up a, up a conversation about amending section one chapter 176 of the town code i i thought we had done that uh, under your predecessor um and i was yeah. i was surprised that you know that, that you weren't collecting the fee no because our, our permit fee that we've been using just says to the permit fee is a, the permit fee and the permit is 150 right or no the town code 176 says it's going to be 150. Oh, okay and you may say something different but you don't collect it like if somebody's if somebody's using, we have people who try to tie into catch basins. If they do everything to the side to the way they want it, we don't really worry about it. Right, right, and that's you know that that is kind of I, I don't know. I think that I think the town board may want to open up a discussion about um, different yeah. circumstances. I don't think they want to. Uh, you, you may not want yeah, we always get stuck with the people who give us a call and their you know sewers are backed up. Sure, they got sure. Things flowing in their basement they don't want, and then they have to cut sure. them on the road. And we're like, okay, I don't want a, a long ten thousand dollars worth of damage. We'll, we'll, we'll probably no, have to do and, this. And I understand that, but on the other hand, you have a, a new uh, a new for profit business coming in, and and I think the the the, the obligation was to get a value for that and to make it fair and consistent. So the the the, the opportunity is here in the, in the, in the draft permit we, we uh, wrote for your consideration uh, to have a per foot fee for those long cuts as well as an additional fee um, as, well as, a, as well as a base fee for each, each um, job. Okay. Well, will we be getting final maps of where yes. things are going? Yes. Underground? Okay. And they, depending on how much they want to do, I mean, they may want to let you know far in advance. Uh, what their plans are. You may want to even coordinate in with the paving, with the paving schedule, so you know. So they know. Most utilities are out there. Pardon me. Usually ten or fifteen feet in people's lawns. Right. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so I, last, obviously, the last thing we want to do is hit something like where we had Barney Road when we took out eleven hundred telephone lines because we didn't know it was there. Or back um, with NYOH. Oh, when, oh, remember the oh, problem oh, with NYOH and Sidley Road? Yeah, well, all the, you know, I assume the professionals, when they go to bury something underground, they're going to follow the safety guidelines to, to the letter. Yeah. Well, you would hope. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
we would get food hope, but it doesn't, I, I do understand that it doesn't always happen and some of those accidents kind of go both ways. And do, right, they do. They do. Um, so above ground neighborhoods are going to stay above ground, below ground neighborhoods are going to stay below ground. Because they do talk about installation of new poles. I just want to make sure the developments where people have moved in or have lived there for, for quite a long time where all the utilities are underground, they're not installing new poles. I don't think we got that far. Oh, okay. I mean, I think the initial plot for uh, next year is they're trying to they're trying to get the 3,600 homes next year. Okay. Yeah, that's the initial. Uh, and so, so are they just starting with like one or two little neighborhoods first and expanding, like going? Yeah, one section. And that goes. Yeah, one section. But I don't even think they have that totally mapped out. They just have some ideas. So, that's why we weren't able. But big picture, they're thinking like this would be an option for everybody in Clifton Park eventually. Eventually, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I'm, gonna, I'm the one who's going to be doing the inspections. And that's why you're the one that's collecting the food. <laughs> I don't want to use my <laughs> We'll find some. So, okay. Hey, very good. Well, to, sorry, to answer yes. the question, if they wanted to put a new pole in, what is the process for that? Uh, that is not covered, and I didn't, I, I didn't talk, to, I didn't see that, that new polls were um, under consideration. That would have to be, we'd, we'd have to. Any time new polls have gone in the past, have only been in an emergency situation. Right. So right. Um, we're just doing everything we can to get power telecommunications back up and running. So there really is right. not, for in my five years, there's not a good uh, precedent to sit back and say that this is how we've done it. So we might have to. Right, and and you know the other thing, quite frankly, that, that you know Verizon has talked to us a couple of times about small cell technology, and that may entail uh, some smaller uh, new facilities, and we may it's another reason to open up a conversation about 176 and whether this permit or this this permit process can be expanded to handle that. That should also have similar value to the town. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Tom. And Tom, as we start moving into this realm, I'll just work with you on this, and we'll figure it all out. Happy to, happy to go one step at a time with you. Awesome. Thank you for your work on this. Very good. Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Waller? Yes. Supervisor Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 267 of 2021, a resolution appointing Scott P. Right. Stiles to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Submit. Second by Mr. Standard, second by Mr. Morelli. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Wang for his uh, uh, volunteerism on behalf of the town as a, an alternate on the uh, zoning board. The um, post, uh, well, post the, the worst of the pandemic and his, uh, and his business schedule staying, uh, changing. <coughs> And let's hope it was the worst of the pandemic because it uh, is still with us and actually we've seen an increase in cases recently. Um, but his uh, travel schedule has, uh, has increased quite a bit. So uh, he did uh, say that he was going to miss some meetings and that if we had somebody else that was interested to uh, please fill the uh, spot. Uh, Scott Stiles is somebody that uh, grew up uh, in Clifton Park, graduated from Shen. Uh, has lived here for a period of time, did go away, uh, and had a um, very successful career in the educational field. He's, uh, he's moved back to town and uh, is very uh, eager to uh, begin as a member of the zoning board, or, or as alternate in the zoning board. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Teresa? Councilwoman Flood? Yes. Councilwoman Standard? Yes. Councilman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Wallowin? Yes. Supervisor Barrett. Yes, any other business to come before the board this evening? Okay, we'll go to uh, public privilege. If you'd like to speak on a town matter, please raise your hand. We'll ask that you come forward. Change your name and address for the record, and please keep it to five minutes or less. Is there anybody that would like to speak? Yes, sir. Please come up. What? Good evening, How are you doing today? Good. My name is Mark Gallio, a resident of Clifton Park. Colony, mm -hmm. 24 years. Um, just would really like to get an update on the, and maybe the timeline, 
on the pickleball courts that are, are that we've heard are being constructed on the commons. Is this something that uh, has been brought up? I've got a petition of about 100 names here. Okay. And I believe it was Amy that spoke to one of my players that said that uh, this was might be happening in the spring. Oh, okay. Is there any update or timeline? Uh, any truth to it? <laughs> uh, no, there, there's no plan at this point uh, to construct courts on the common. Okay. I did have a meeting with, with a representative from one of the park districts over the summer. Um, but there are no plans at this moment for any construction of Not exclusive pickleball courts. No. Huh. Okay, I guess I might have been given some incorrect information. <laughs> I heard earlier, though, about the facility at Players Park mm -hmm. um, and the opportunities that were there for you know, volleyball, but I think that's all considered to be turf on the inside, which would not work for pickleball. So. Yeah, uh, obviously we didn't get into that level of detail yeah. tonight with them. Uh, I don't know if that is something that is a possibility, uh, but um, certainly something you could ask at, uh, well, we could, we could find out for you or uh, make sure, John, if the uh, planning board could ask uh, at the next meeting that they're present, what are the options? Uh, are there any other options other than what they mentioned this evening? Yeah, I'll reach out to the applicant to get some clarification on that. So I guess my last question then would be, what is the process? Um, since we have a, a hundred names, uh, to have something done either on the commons or someplace within Clifton Park. Um, a bunch of us had played at George T. Smith. Mm -hmm. I believe there have been some complaints that we were over there too early, but you know, we take care of courts, we blow the leaves off. Mm -hmm. And recently, most recently during the summer and right until the snowfall, we've been playing and will be playing, continue to play a long kill. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know why it had come up that there might be something in, uh, going on in the uh, in the commons. Yeah, it's the fastest growing sport in the country. Oh, it is. It is. Um, and I know some of the courts do need some maintenance, especially the ones at George T. Smith. Um, there's lots of cracks, and um, so don't know what's what if anything is going to be done with those yeah so what do we need to do next what do 100 people who are interested in having some well, we, courts? well i definitely know that there is a lot of interest it is a very popular game that's why we continue to expand the number of courts that we line for it uh and uh, certainly at some point um we'd like to have a singular facility uh obviously with the growth and the popularity and it's another sport that is i think grown during COVID as well um and some of that might have to do with people that would normally travel that didn't and stay stay around but um it would have to be a rather large facility um because obviously you don't want to build something and then have it be Right, right off the get-go, have it be something that's too small, and you end up with more frustrated people than, than happy people. Are you talking indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, but we we understand there's a significant amount of interest, and uh, it is it is a fun game. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Now the YMCA had a large league that grew over the year, but yeah, that's still years, continuing. But they. Are they back to that yet? They are. They are, okay. They are. They and know. also Impact has a schedule five days a week. Right. No weekends because they're doing the tournaments. Mm -hmm. um, some of the players have have gone there. The reports have not been all that good because of the glare. It's very, very bright inside. Yeah. Um, so that's an issue. Um, so we will just continue to pluck until, as I said, the snow falls. What's the, what's the structure of it? Is, it? is it a league at Impact? Is Impact just open? Is, is it a league? Open it, players. Open players. Open players. Um, there are senior discounts. Mm -hmm. Morning hours, 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So do they charge you for a session? You can go in for a session, $7 for a session. 
And how long is the session? Um, two hours, and I believe on Friday evenings, 7 to like 8.30. They also have a Friday evening. Okay. Monday through Friday, and then a Friday evening. But it's open. It's open for everyone. Yeah. Um, but we're all, as, as pickleball participants, we're a little disappointed with it. Beautiful facility. Oh, it is. But not, not the best for pickleball. <laughs> We'd rather be outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it is a beautiful facility. And it, there's a lot to offer there. So. Okay, so I guess uh, I have to bring the bad news back to you. Yeah, well, don't lose faith. Okay. But uh, I don't have any good, well, I don't have any great news for you tonight. Well, I actually did hear good news about the uh, <laughs> about the Veterans Memorial Park and the, and the fencing being done. So thanks for that. You play softball too? Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. But not on field three. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna get the one and two All next right. year. All right. Thank but, you. Uh, Thank you we had some money in the budget this year and wanted to uh, get started on some improvements there. But, Mark, uh, do you guys you do lessons for pickleball? Um, lessons are offered at the Y. No, oh, okay. Yeah, they're offered at the Y. Because I know Saratoga County does a program for pickleball. And I was wondering if our Parks and Rec team we could do some kind of in the future program with pickleball. Yes, that's a good one. Okay. It's, it's open. I have no idea what they're going to do with impact. Um, they're, they are getting a lot of players, but I think it's actually going to fall off because the way it's constructed, it's, you, you, you can't really look up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without having sunglasses on. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, Motion to adjourn. Second okay. by Mr. Morelli. Councilwoman Slug? Yes. Councilwoman Sandler? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes. Councilwoman Morelli? Yes, I uh, wish everybody a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, <laughs>